Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So today we're going to be having a quick look into Git submodules. Um, I feel like these have been given a bit of a bad rep in the in the past, but I've been using them quite a bit recently and they've been absolutely perfect. So if you enjoy this kind of content, please consider subscribing and let's get right into it. So we're just going to quickly start off with what a submodule is and when or why you'd use it. And then we'll go into a practical example. We'll start from absolute scratch, let's create a repository and uh, add a submodule to see how it works. So what is a submodule? So if you think about any kind of application you're working on, whether it's the front end or back end, usually what you end up doing is adding dependencies onto your project, right? So if I'm on the front end, I'll use NPM, the package manager, to bring in external dependencies and I'll use them within my project and I bring them in at a certain version. So Git submodules is, you know, the kind of similar concept, right? It's a project within a project. So um, within one repository, you're going to bring in another repository into that repository so it lives within the repository and you have access to it and um, obviously the difference between this and kind of your standard package managers is you have access to the full repository instead of you know just maybe the, the distribution so the example that we're going to be looking at today um, is uh, just exactly what we have here so we have this git submodule tutorial repository which we've created and all it has in it is a readme and let's say for example in this case we want to bring in my other repository which is my youtube tutorials repository where i hold all my tutorials and this is the structure here. What we do is we go to the Git submodule tutorial and we say, hey, can you add YouTube tutorials as a dependency, um, as a Git submodule? And I want it at version ABC123. This is essentially the, the hash commit of the repository. So that's how we version the Git submodules. And then what happens is now you have access to the entire repository. You can see these are exactly the same. You have access to that within the Git submodule. Um, tutorial repository. So we're essentially just bringing in a repository and it just now lives within here. It's almost kind of like a, a sim link or a link to that repository. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll have more of a look at this uh, later on in the code if this doesn't quite quite make sense. Moving on to why or when you'd use it. Um, it's a bit of a tough one, but the, the biggest example is basically for, for sharing libraries, like I said. So whenever you want to share libraries, usually you'd use uh, package managers for your different technologies which for the most part is fine. Sometimes there's a good use case to use Git submodules. So the kind of the two main ones I can think of is there are certain scenarios where just by using the package manager, um, you don't get everything or you don't get access to everything you need because the package manager, of course, is just taking the distribution. So you're only really getting access to what the library owners want you to access. Uh, and sometimes you just want the, you know, the entire repository. You might want to kind of take things into your hands. You might want to, um, I don't know, customize uh, things in your own way. That's usually a good um, a good contender for using Git submodules. The one that I'm familiar with, or the reason I've used it in the past, is we had a, a repository which had multiple different package managers um, because we had different technologies all in one repository, back ends, front ends, etc. And we needed to share um, one specific directory or library which just contains some property files across all the different um, technologies. So we basically had to decide between uh, creating our own distributions for all the different package managers and maintaining that and versioning, etc. Or what we did instead is just bring in a Git submodule of that repository and now every application or every different technology had it available in the repository to, to basically use it when it needs it to. So that's kind of roughly uh, why and when, hopefully that makes sense. Um, and now let's dive into the, to the code and see it in practice. So I've got my two repositories on the right-hand side here. So this is the submodule uh, repository and this is the um, tutorials repository. And I've just opened up the Git submodule repository here on the left-hand side. Uh, and I've just got a couple of terminals uh, for both of those. So on the left-hand side, you can see the submodule one, you can see the directory layout here. Again, it's just the readme file. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add the YouTube tutorials as a Git submodule into the submodule tutorial here. So I'm gonna do git and all submodule commands start with submodule, um, just like that. And you can see the different commands that we have here. I don't think you really need to know all of them. You can get away with just knowing the, the basics. Um, and the one we're gonna start off with here is git submodule add. And this does, as you'd expect, it adds a submodule. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the URL from the YouTube tutorials link here on the right hand side, and I'm just gonna paste it in. So I'm essentially pasting in that uh, that link and I'm just going to hit enter here and you can see there it's cloning that repository it's taking it through and we'll just give that a second to load and now that's done you can see there's a few things going on so um, mainly you'll see two things in the repository you can see that we have the YouTube tutorials directory here right so if I go down here and I just run my uh, tree command again uh, this time with two you'll see that we have the readme and then we have the YouTube tutorials and now we have the the content of my YouTube tutorials inside this repository, which is exactly what we want. 
But you'll also notice we have this .git modules file. So this is basically how um, Git keeps track of its submodules. And if we click into that, you can see it has submodule called YouTube tutorials. We have the path to that submodule because of course it can be anywhere uh, within your directory. In this case, it's just YouTube tutorials. And then we have the URL. Um, and that's it. That's basically how it links to uh, the repository. And now the one other thing that we don't quite see in this view is basically the dependency version, right? Now, this is the bit that might confuse some people. Um, we don't actually have the explicit commit hash anywhere in the repository. It's just kind of implicitly picked up by Git, right? So uh, it just knows that this is on, uh, I think this took it straight from master. So it just takes that commit hash and that's what we apply there. So usually the best place to, to view this is actually, uh, you know, on GitHub or, or GitLab or whatever. So let's actually commit these changes and see what that looks like. So what I want to do here, um, if I do actually a git status, we can see that uh, everything's up to date, but we've added obviously the, the two new files. So I'm just going to add that and I'll just commit that with a, a message add, oops, add sub module. And then I'm just going to push these changes up to the repository. So now that that's done, what we can do is we can actually just come back in here, I hit refresh, and we can see the sub module there. So we can see the git modules, which everything's working fine. And we can see this kind of weird directory and you can see this at symbol, which has got the, the commit hash. And if we basically go over to the each tutorials here and we go into commits, we can see the last commit hash is uh, 4f23. So if I go back, it's pointing to 4f23, right? And of course, if I click into here, it's just going to take me exactly to that uh, that repository, right? So this is basically what a git sub module is. Like I said, it's kind of similar to a, a, a sim link um, where it's just linking directly to another project. But the biggest benefit, of course, is you have access to that repository inside here. Now, it's really worth noting that the kind of the life cycle of a sub module works slightly differently from the life cycle of your standard project. So by default, um, when you're using git commands, it will ignore all sub modules uh, until you explicitly tell it to focus on the sub module. So what that means is if you clone a repository, um, it will clone the repository, it won't It won't clone the sub-module, it will have kind of an empty shell there, we'll see that in a second. Um, if you do a git pool or a git branch, etc., it basically will ignore the sub-module by default. Um, and I think the reason for that is, uh, you know, security reasons, but also uh, just in terms of load, if you have lots of sub-modules, that's going to be big requests, so I think it just kind of wanted to keep that small. Um, but what you can do for any command, uh, like git pool, uh, or git branch, etc., you can add the kind of recursive sub-module, or sorry, recurse sub-module flag, uh, and what that will do is it will, for, ex for example, in this case, it will pull and then it'll go through each of the sub modules and just apply the same command. And one tip with that, if you don't want to type out um, recursive modules every time, you can actually update this in your config global or, or local. So I think the config is uh, sub module dot recurse. Um, so you can set that to true or to false, depending on what you want. Uh, and then that way um, it will basically add the recurse sub module flag onto uh, all of your commands. So let's see this in action. So I have a um, just a temp directory here and I'm just going to go over to this repository and I'm just gonna clone, uh, I'm gonna use SSH and I'm just gonna clone this again. So I'm just gonna do git clone um, the repository. And now I could add the recurse sub modules flag to make sure that all the sub modules are downloaded. But in this case, I'm just gonna uh, basically ignore it and see what it looks like. So now that we have that, let's CD into the git sub modules and let's just do, um, the, the tree command actually and you'll see actually that all we have is this readme and we have the uh, the YouTube tutorials obviously we also have the uh, uh, the git modules there, uh, file there but if we CD into the YouTube tutorials it's empty there's absolutely nothing there and that's basically because we haven't told git to recurse some modules we didn't tell it to actually pull them in so again what we could have done is add the uh, recurse sub modules flag at the start alternatively what we can do is we can run the git sub module um, update with hyphen hyphen in it. So we're initializing and we're running an update. And what this will do is basically go through again, go through the sub modules uh, and make sure to, to bring them in. So this will take a few seconds and there we go. Uh, it's all worked fine. So again, now if I um, CD into the YouTube tutorials and you can see here, uh, I do an LS, we can basically see all the, um, the different files. And one thing you might notice is when I was on the git sub module tutorial here, um, it says main here. This is the name of the branch. Um, I was in that repository, I was on the main branch. When I checked out, or when I, sorry, uh, changed directory into the YouTube tutorials branch, you can see I'm on a different branch. Uh, and that's because I'm in a different repository completely. We are in the YouTube tutorials repository, and now the, the terminal will just treat it as if that's my parent. So um, I can do, if I just do a git checkout master here as well, just to, and I'll clear that. I am in the YouTube tutorials repository, 
even though my parent is the uh, Git Submodules repository, um, and I can, you know, everything I do now is within this YouTube tutorials repository. So if I um, check the, the 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 log, let's do this command here. Um, we can see the logs for the YouTube tutorials repository, right? Um, and I'm just gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this a bit bigger, uh, and then what we'll do is we'll just split this because if I then go up a directory CD, which is in the um, Git sub module tutorial, and I just do the same command, just a, a Git log here. Um, we can see that this is uh, a different different log. That's because we're in two repositories, even though um, they're kind of in the within each one another, right? So the good thing about this is, um, even if you don't know much about submodules, um, as long as you know kind of the basic Git commands, you're going to be able to to work with this fine, right? Because regardless, you're always just going to be in a Git repository, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to see how uh, how it works with changes right so let's say we want to update the the version of the um the commit right we want to update the version of the repository so i'm going to go into the youtube tutorials uh directory here um let's just uh update the the readme here and let's just add uh test and we'll just save that and what we're going to do is we'll just commit that onto to to master uh, i think i need to add that so get add and get commit and let's just say uh update readme and now that we've added this commit here, if we look at the, let's do a git status. Oh, sorry, let's do a git log. This is where origin master is. So that's 4f2. And now we've got a new commit hash, right? Now that I've added a new commit within the repository itself, within the repository, if I just hit enter here, you can see there's a little star here. Um, on my terminal, that means there's some changes. So if I do a git status here, what that means is it's basically saying, hey, your main repo is fine. Your branch is up to date with an origin main. Uh, but what you have modified is the YouTube tutorials directory. You've added new commits there, um, and we need we can you know we can track that for you, and we can add that to this main repository. So what we can do is um, let's basically I'll push this guy up here, uh, and what I'll actually do is I'll check out a temp branch just so I don't uh, override my master branch. It doesn't matter which branch again, as long as you've got the commit hash. Um, so I'm going to do a git push origin temp here. There we go. And on the right hand side, um, what we can do is we can just do a git add, oh, uh, again, git commit, and we'll just give this a message of um, update submodule uh, version. And we can just push that, and that should all work fine. So now if we try to go back up to the repository, and I just hit refresh here, so this was 4f23, if I refresh this, now it's 4425. So that's it. All we had to do was update the um, whatever you know commit is um, on the the sub module, and then we update that on the parent repository, and now it's updated and it all just kind of works fine. So if I click into this now, it's going to take me to that commit within this repository. So hopefully that made a bit of sense. Um, the one other thing to note there is that if you make changes within this repository, so let's say uh, I go back into here, uh, I update the the readme again. And let's just say I remove that line test. Um, now I go over to my main repository. Again, I'm working almost in two separate repository and I do a git status. Um, again, it will say that your main branch is up to date. Everything's fine, but you have changes within your repository. So now if I do like a git add here or something, there's not gonna be anything to add. So you don't need to worry about pretend, you know, accidentally committing things in because they are still two separate repositories. You can't accidentally commit um, changes here unless you add the commit here and you know update the version but now it's you know uh, the changes are kind of you know completely separate so one of the final things worth mentioning is that um get sub modules can get quite powerful and um, they do have a lot more commands you can see that they have this kind of for each uh, which basically you can go through all your different sub modules and execute different uh, uh different commands there um but for the most part i don't really think you need to know these commands as long as you understand that they are two separate repositories you can just uh uh, CD into the you know the, the sub module, make changes, commit it, and then CD back up, and you essentially treat it as uh, two separate um, repositories. But as long as you mentally understand that they are linked in a way, then that's basically all all you need to know. So um, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. I think that's hopefully a good enough place to kind of get you at least started with uh, with sub modules. So thank you very much for watching. Have a good day, and I'll see you in the next one.